and welcome back to Up The Villa podcast. This is our match preview for Aston Villa v Wolves. Huge game like they all are now and only nine games to go, which sounds not a lot. And in that space of time, our fate with the Champions League is going to be met. So... Before I came on, I was thinking, how am I feeling about, you know, the next nine games? And I felt, you know what? I've got to just embrace it and enjoy it and be positive because this next nine games are absolutely massive. You know, momentum is going to be huge. Picking up points is going to be huge. It's not really a time now to be playing fantastic football and wanting fantastic football. All it's about now is getting results. Just get results. So I'm feeling positive. I'm feeling like Champions League qualification is going to happen. Justin, how are you feeling? Uh, terrible. I've got a bad back. But as far as the villa goes, this is what I need to take my mind off my horrific back pain. Um, I'm looking forward to it. Can't wait for the running. I've said it numerous times over the last few months, this is what supporting your team's all about. These amazing times that that just suddenly happen, and, and which what's happened since the Emirates arrived at Villa, it's been brilliant, and it's culminating now in a an end of season we could have only dreamed of five six years ago. We've got nine games to secure Champions League football, and we've got a quarter final of a, a European competition to look forward to. How many times over the last twenty years have, have we got to the last ten games of a season? We're out of all cup competitions and we're either mid-table or battling down the bottom of the league. What's not to enjoy? What's not to embrace? It's phenomenal. We've got a fantastic chance of finishing top four and even top five could be good enough for Champions League. So we've got a little bit of a fallback there. Can't wait for the Wolves guy. Couldn't really have asked for a better game after the international break to get your teeth stuck into either a good local derby. Um, I've got lots of Wolves mates next to neighbours a Wolves fan. Boyfriend of the daughter is a Wolves fan, so I'm getting lots of stick from all angles at the moment. So, could really do with a win in this one. You can't be getting a stick from a Wolves fan, though, mate. We're above them, do you know what I mean? Uh, no, but yeah, we've so... got a good record, haven't we? That's the no, problem. This is, this we ha- is, we'll get into it, I'm sure. But yeah, we, we haven't got a great record at Villa Park against them in the Premier League era. But well, yeah, we'll get into it in a bit, but I am feeling I am feeling confident for this one. Um, so this episode is brought to you by Sofa Score, the quickest live score app on your fingertips. Whenever a goal goes in, Sofa Score is the quickest. It's better than live score, and then you can have most of the data that we're going to be using on our channel today on your fingertips, and you'll be able to use it at home and see all of these great stats that we have got to offer. But Justin. Nine games to go. It's important to focus on the game that's coming up, just like Unai Emery will be doing. That's Unai Emery's job. But us as Villa fans, we can have a little wander and look into the distance of what is on the horizon. It feels like we've said this quite a lot, but this is a big week. And this is a big week that ties into another week. So we play Wolves on Saturday. We've got Man City on Wednesday, followed up by Brentford. So those are three Premier League games done and dusted in the space of a week, which will only leave six to go. So looking at this bigger picture of where we're going to be, this week is quite big. It is. It's huge. Um, You know, we've got... Well, how many home games we've got left in the league now? One, two, five, four or five. So we've got to pick. We've got to look to pick maximum points up at home, and especially in the next week. You know, Wolves, Brentford. We need to be getting six points in those two games. The Man City game. Whilst I'll never write any game off, especially with our team and how we've played this season. I mean, just look at probably our best performance this season. One of the best for the performances that I can remember in my lifetime was the Man City home game. We were absolutely phenomenal. So I'm not writing off that we can't get anything at. at at the Etihad, but reality is it's a very difficult place to go. They always hit form at the end of the season. That's what they're doing currently. They're coming like a steam train. So we have two home games to come, a tricky midweek away game at the home of the champions. 
six points for me would be a phenomenal return and would leave us with six games to go in a very, very strong position, I think, in the league. And I think whilst Emery won't be looking any further ahead than the Wolves game, I'm pretty sure behind closed doors they'll be looking at the next week thinking, OK, two wins at home, anything at City's a bonus. Yeah, definitely. We have got a little treat for you if you want to use it. So I'm wearing this hoodie from Toffs. You can get 15% off using the code UTVPOD15 on their website and take a look at all of their retro range. So I'll put their um, website in the description to this video. Use the code you can get 15% off. So there you go. Right, so Wolves. Do you know what? Rivalry aside, I'm happy for them. And I'm happy for West Midlands football that we've got two teams that are in the top half of the Premier League. And I think that's great for West Midlands football. I think you hear so much of when we've been in this running this season, whether it's in the title, whether it's, you know, top four, don't really get much credit. It's always the big six. But getting Midlands clubs in the top 10, I'm all I'm here for it now because I'm fed up of hearing about all these London clubs. So fair play to them. And I think most of us would have said, and even Wolves fans were probably fearful going into the season with Lopetegui leaving, Gary O'Neill's come in, and he's done he's done brilliant, you know. He's and it kind of shows Lopetegui in a bit of a bad light, really, that all he wanted was the money and he didn't want to coach him. He didn't want to sort of maybe struggle and he didn't have to want to dig in and and, and try and fight to, to climb the league. He wanted it probably nice and easy and just play great football. But, you know, fair play to Gary O'Neill because they're doing really well. They've beat some big teams this season. And I've just got admiration for a West Midlands club that's, doing well in the Premier League. I, I'm not going to, just because I'm a Villa fan, just try and create a rivalry. I don't mind Wolves. And I, and I, I really want to see West Midlands football doing really, really well. So that's my thoughts on, on Wolves. What what have you made of them? I'm a bit different to you because I live uh, in Canada, which is a <laughs> massive Wolves area. So my childhood is full of um, a lots of banter with Wolves fans. So I can't wish them well. I can appreciate, though, how good a job Gary O'Neill has done. Uh, and, and he has done... I mean, I had him down for relegation this season. I'm not going to lie about it. And I know I've talked to Daz Howell a lot on WM, and, and he's a massive Wolves fan, and, and he, he didn't, didn't he didn't disagree with me at the start of the season. He really feared for Wolves. But what Gary O'Neill has done has been pretty monumental. I think I put a tweet out a few weeks ago that the three managers, I think, should be in line for, for manager of the season was Emery, Gary O'Neill and, and um, the Luton manager. Um, it's been brilliant. He's done absolutely fantastic. And I think it shows that if you can get a squad right, men, the mentality of your team right, it, it almost doesn't matter the quality of players. I know, I mean, let's be right, most Premier League clubs have got quality in their ranks. They're not going to be in the Premier League if you haven't got at least a stable of really, really good footballers. And despite the Wolves players that they had to shed in the summer to comply with the FFP problems, they did retain a certain amount of quality. Now, the key to their success this season has been togetherness. And what O'Neill's managed to do, he's, he's basically come in. The other manager, like you say, Lopetag, he's just basically, you know, did an O'Neill, on a, a Martin O'Neill, and walked out to start the season and left him in disarray and he's come in and he said right lads he doesn't think you're good enough the press don't think you're good enough half our fan base thinks we're going to go down let's prove them wrong we've got nothing to lose here you know I think you're good footballers I think we can get a system right we can get a way of playing the style that works for us as a team a bit like you know I'll go to another Midland school a bit like um, uh, uh, what's his name, Eustace did at Blues, they had their backs against the one. They did phenomenally well. He just f found a way of getting the best out of the players he's got. And that's exactly Wolves' success this season. Recently, they've lost a lot of players to injury. So I think that's definitely going to impact them now on the running. But definitely hold my hands up. A lot of admiration for, for Wolves of what they've done. Still want to smash the living daylights out of them on <laughs> Saturday night. That has to change. But I, I can, as a football fan, Definitely, from a distance, respect Gary O'Neill's job that he's done there. You can't fault him, really. Yeah. 
But I do think we're going to beat them at Villa Park on Saturday. I, I, so. I, I, I look at this game now and I think, right, we do a, we do a win against these at home. And I thought that the last three I, times. No, I know, but I, I do really think we're going to beat them. Um, I think, I, yeah, I think I think we're in a good place, Villa. Yeah. Now I think we've yeah. I think we've we've had we've had our wobble. And yeah, we didn't beat West Ham, but West Ham is a tough place to go. You know, but Man United have lost there this season. Arsenal have lost there this season, so it's a tough place. And they're they're doing really, really well in the league. West Ham as well. And I think you know, we've all. I think the West Ham fans do West Ham a bit of disservice, really, because I, I think they're better than what West Ham fans give them credit for, really. Um, so yeah, I, I think it's going to be a difficult game. I, I think. I look at Neto not being at there, and I think you know he's he's a big player, Neto, and not only is he a big player, but he's a player that could potentially hurt Villa. You know, with how we play, we saw it in the reverse fixture. You know, we set up their goal on transition, very good. So the fact that he's not playing, I think it's going to be a bit of a blow. They've been missing Cunha, they've been missing Huang. So I don't know whether either those are back. Dawson's been out. So, you know, they've got their own injury problems, especially to their front line. So we'll have to see who's back for them. But, you know, Villa Park, under the lights, packed out, looking forward to it. And I think, you know, we've got players now who are full of confidence and not only full of confidence because of what, they've been doing with Villa. You've got Ollie Watkins coming back from international duty with England. You've got Ezri Konza coming back. You've got DRB. Zaniolo's been playing for Italy. So we've got players that have been with their national teams coming back and featuring and are going to be full of confidence. So let's have a little look at sort of the tale of what's been happening then. So this one does read for a bit of grimish reading then. So Wolves have got three away wins at Villa Park in the Premier League era. We have only got one home win. There's been six draws, so not the best. Uh, we've got our previous results, the 1-1, the 1-0 Wolves win, and then the 1-1. So there's been quite a few draws recently. Form guide, mixed bag, I guess, for, for both, really. Um, they beat Fulham in their last game, and then we drew with West Ham. They did lose to Coventry in the quarterfinal of the FA Cup when they were, were all singing they're going to Wembley and then 10 minutes later, they are not going to Wembley. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so this season, we are fourth, they're ninth. We've won 17, which is incredible. Uh, they've won 12, we've drawn five, lost seven, they've lost 11. We are scoring 2.1 goals per game. They're scoring 1.5. They're conceding 1.6 and we are conceding 1.4. So Villa can score two goals. Looks like Wolves might score one, two, one. Who knows? Right, this is the style comparison then. So I think Wolves' style has changed a little bit as well as the season's gone on. They were a little bit more fast and direct playing on transition and now they're ed edging into the slow and intricate mark and Villa are edging to a more slower and intricate phase. So we're more edging towards that right-hand side now, where early on in the season, we were slap-bang in the middle. We've got Wolves is territorial advantage. So the blue is where Wolves are comfortable with the ball. The grey is contested areas. And the red is where the opposition get most of their joy against Wolves. And generally, when I do these comparisons, this is how the game generally does pan out slightly as well. So if we have a look at Aston Villas, we're very blue up until the halfway line, as you'd expect from a really good possession-based football side. Contested areas, so either or, and then the red is where the opposition get most of their joy against Aston Villa. So if we look at both these images, it would tell you that Aston Villa are going to dominate the game, dominate possession, and Wolves are going to try and hit Aston Villa on the break, just looking at these two graphics. This was the Wolves' average position against Fulham, and we have their average passing networks across the whole of the season. So this takes into consideration the whole season 
and the average player that has played in each position. So you can see number eight, very, very central, and everybody else is in and around number eight. We've got some of the stats as well from their key players. So a non-penalty XG, we've got Cunha is their biggest threat with 7.18. We've got Huang at 6.20. We've got open play expected assist. We've got Neto of 3.48, Cunha of 2. 0.87, and Sarabia is playing quite well for them as well. But I'm going to kick it off and say, one of the players recently that I've been impressed with from Wolves is Ait Nori. I think he's been a real big threat for them in the last couple of games. And he's another player that sort of went coached well and is in a good environment. Might not have been one of their best players a season ago, but if you can get them happy and having a good purple patch, then... Uh, Ait Nori is having a pretty, pretty good season. So, Justin, I've spoke a bit. What do you make of what I've said? Yeah, I think it's going to be a tight game. I think they're definitely going to come to try and hit us on the break. I think personnel is going to dictate this game, isn't it? I mean, we're obviously going to be missing uh, John McGinn, which is a big blow for us. They're, they're very strong central midfielder, Lamina, and uh, I think it's Joe Gomez that played for Brazil the other night. They're really, really good players. So I think we've got to really contest that area in there with the two double pivots each side. I think top up top wise, I think Wang and Kuna are 50-50 for this one, so they might make the bench. But obviously Neto's a huge loss for them. So I'm, I'm, I think, and I did also highlight Aint Nuri as well, who is a real attacking threat for them. He loves to get forward. He loves to bomb on. In a similar kind of fashion to the way we like to use our left back, really, he loves to get forward, he loves to get on the overlap, and he's a decent finisher for a for a defender. So I think it's 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 going to be blood and thunder. You know, the, the most frustrating thing about every time we play Wolves is uh, normally they're in poor form when they come to Villa Park, and I just think we're going to steamroller them, and then they turn up and they're a lot of Barcelona. So you know, their their style of play seems to change when they play us. They just seem to be able to raise their game at Villa Park. And it's it's a big game for us, obviously, but it's a huge game for them and their record at Villa Park would, would definitely feed into that. So we've got to make sure we're on it and we've got to make sure it wasn't that long ago. We were two nil up, you know, and they they scored three yeah, you know, two really light goals to beat us. So we've got to make sure that that if we do dominate and we do get ahead of steam up, that we, we punish them and we punish them heavily. You know, we need to be two or three up in this game to make sure it's a done game because they're not going to stop. They're going to come to try and take anything they can from Villa Park. You know, I think roughly where they are now is where they're going to finish. Uh, they're out of all the cups. So this is a huge game. They're probably their biggest game till the end of the season coming to Villa Park. So we've got to make sure we start well. We've got to make sure that we, we are on it from the first whistle and as always, first goal is absolutely critical once again in this game. Yeah, they the, the play five at the back, don't they? And, and generally, we, we're we quite good against playing against teams that play five at the back as well. So I think we, just with our possession-based game, we should be quite dominant in this game, I think. And we'll go into more detail tomorrow on on the predicted lineup of 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 how tactically we see the game going but you know looking at the season as a whole now sort of like not I know we touched on it at the start are you are you pretty confident we can get top four I mean I say top four I'm, I'm talking Champions League because it looks like fifth place is going to get Champions League football as well how, how are I you think, feeling yeah I, I, look I think we're going to finish in Champions League places, which for me is top four. But I do also think fifth will be Champions League this season. I think looking at the coefficient and looking at, I think there's a, um, is it Arsenal? Arsenal got by Munich in one of the games. I think that yes. could be critical. Um, but I also think Arsenal are good enough to beat by Munich. I think that, you know, they haven't been the by Munich of old. So I think there's lots of factors to keep an eye on in Europe, um, lots of reasons to support other teams in Europe this season because it's going to have a huge impact on hopefully on us but uh, you know I don't I think we'll be looking to finish in the top four and I think fixtures we've got left especially the home fixtures like Wolves Brentford um, Bournemouth Bournemouth yeah Chelsea. Chelsea and then Liverpool 
you know, some tough games in there, but we owe Chelsea one. The other, apart from Liverpool, Bournemouth, Brentford and Wolves, we've got to be looking to win. And then anything we pick up away from them. Palace, last game of the season, you know, you know, Brighton not being brilliant recently, have they? So I think there's lots of there's lots of positions, uh, games there where we can pick lots of points up. And we've got a little bit of a buffer between us and, and, and Tottenham. And yes, when we lost heavily to them a couple of weeks ago, it was all doom and gloom. And, Oh, you know, all the press, were, they were out for the moon with that, weren't they? Oh, Villa are going to collapse now. Well, Tottenham is going to steamroller it now, finishing the top four. But look what happened the week after. They're in a very similar position to us, whereas one week they can look brilliant and then all of a sudden they can throw a real stinker in. So that will still happen with them. Whilst we probably will lose games we don't expect to, I'm sure they will as well. So it's going to be tight. It's going to be close. We've got a lovely little gap between us and Man United, which I think currently is the most important uh, gap to keep an eye on. Um, whilst I think we can definitely finish in the top four, uh, we don't want United to get any closer to us because we don't want to be dropping out of the top five. So it's important we pick points up where we where we need to pick points up. And I think starting this Saturday is where we need to pick three points up, regardless that it's a derby or not. It obviously makes a bit of a difference, but... It would be a great start to the final running now after this last um, international break to, to to get three points and kick us off, you know, in style. Yeah, there's not not many games to go, and then we've got we've got the Euros in the summer. Um, I did a watch along, what mainly watching Watkins and and Conser the other day. Um, how are you feeling? Moving on, just touch on England. I know you're not a Southgate fan. How are you feeling about the Euros? Because I, I don't know whether I'm, I'm got a, the wrong thought about England in my head, but I was listening to like the radio talk sport and soon S the other day. And they were talking about like say saying like England are, are going to win the tournament. They're their favourites. That they, they should do this. And I'm thinking, I'm not. I'm not sure it's a, a, a dead sir here. What, what's your thoughts, Justin, on England? Nothing's dead sir, but I think if you look at our best first eleven that we could put out, hopefully in the first game of the Euros, then that team is comfortably good enough to win the Euros. I've, I've no doubt about that. I've felt we've, we've been, the, should have been probably the best team in the last two tournaments. And yes, we've gone close to winning two, but at the critical moment, this is my biggest problem with Southgate, at critical moments in games where you need the manager to make that little bit of a difference, he just hasn't got it. You know, he's not brave enough, he's not bold enough, he, he, he's tactically, I think, a bit naive. You know, that game against Brazil, he come out at the end of the game, it's so frustrating. Yeah, we did well, we did well, but we, we, the, you've been here eight years, Gareth, and we still haven't got a philosophy. It's like Gerard was at Villa for 12 months, didn't have a clue what he was doing. He's got some phenomenal footballers. Jude Bellingham, best midfielder in the world. Foden playing out of his skin. Harry Kane, one of the best goal scorers you know, in, in the world. Declan Rice, brilliant, number six. We've got good defenders, we've got good midfielders, we've got great attackers, we've got good wide men. There's no excuses. And come the start of the Euros, I shall, as he will be the manager, I shall draw a line, a line under Gareth Southgate and my frustration with him, and I shall back them to win the Euros. And I think we should win the Euros, we should be favourites, because we've got a very, very good side. I just worry that, once again, the first decent side we play, we, we should cruise through the, the knockouts, the first good side we play that's got any kind of tactical nous, I think we'll be found wanting. Yeah. But having said that, this eleven is good enough regardless of the manager to win any game. And I think that's the only way we win this tournament. And that is still a good chance, in my opinion, that he will win it because in spite of Southgate, not because of him. Because we have got the quality in the team that can go out and win a game on its own. A Foden can do something. A Greenish can come off the bench and impact a game. A Kane can get a hat-trick here and there. Bellingham's got just the X factor. What a player he is. So when you've got players like that in your team, it, it almost doesn't matter what your manager's doing because at any given moment, you can suddenly have a brilliant 10 minutes. The frustration is the handbrake's always been on me, Gareth, and it, I just wish... I've said it all along, he'd be a great head of the FA. Put him in charge. He's a great man manager. Everybody seems to like the bloke. He's good at organising things. Great. Promote him upstairs, bring in a manager that can, can get the best out of the team. But I should be backing him. 
in the summer. I think you'd be a great Man United manager, I do. I think you'd Give be. Him the job. Give I'll, him the job think, tomorrow. I think you'd be absolutely brilliant. So let, let's see what happens with that one, right? So we've got to run through a couple of things, right, before we end the show. So for score, you can help support the channel by downloading the app for free. A lot of the stuff that I've used on here is off SofaScore. You can scan the QR code on the screen or click the link that's in the description and then that'll take you to be able to download it for free. You can get 15% off Toffs after Aston Villa retro range. Um, so that link will be in the description to the video as well. And I am on the overlap again tomorrow. So uh, check out across the overlap socials and our socials uh, for me on the overlap. So looking forward to the game. We're going to start our build up now. Then we'll have predicted lineup that'll be out tomorrow. We've got opposition preview. We've talking wolves. That'll be out on Thursday. We'll have Unai's presser, which I imagine will be a pretty big one because we'll find out about Ramsey, find out about Cash uh, and how the rest of the squad is looking. Fan camps will be after the game on Saturday, followed by a reaction and a debrief. And then we'll turn our attention to Manchester City away. Justin, before we go, score prediction time. I'll go first. I'm going 2-1. What are you going with? 2 nil. Got to beat him. It's time we beat him. It's time we put this to yeah. bed now. And it's time we beat him. So, 2 0 Villa. It's all about results. Yeah. It's the bottom line. I take I a 1 0 95th minute winner. I don't, I don't <laughs> care how we play as long as we win. I really yeah. don't care now. Uh, we've seen what we can do this season. And just like last season now, this little bit of a run now is where the momentum needs to start and just let it bubble away and then we'll get over that line. So cheers everyone for watching. Up the villa. Up the villa. <laughs>